this painting story when I was doing the research over the last couple of days I discovered um, they in the 1980s um, these paintings were only recently emerged from being culturally protected as far as that the training for them was done as a sacred ceremony the art that was created on the uh, in the cabins uh, you know in the caves were sacred sites and the history of some of the art goes back 40 or 50 thousand years and the stories have been retold and retold and the paintings were redone and redone and then during that 80s period they started to emerge and then go on the canvas and that display at World Expo 88 was really the first worldwide step into the general public. I mean, it, there had been a step down in the Hayman Centre, but that wasn't to 18 million people. That was to a very select group of individuals who attended theatre, um, you know, so thousands, not millions. So, you know, you were incredibly lucky. I, I just was at the, the art gallery the other day and walking through that wonderful exhibition that's on there now, you just stand and, and just wonder at it. I mean, it, it, you're quite right. I mean, that's what it's all about. And, and uh, yeah, so it's good to think that this was possibly the, the beginning of the, of the appreciation that we all enjoy today. There were, there were exhibitions in the early 90s post-Expo uh, that placed artists like Emily Kaminwari uh, on the world stage, and she's now regarded um, as one of the great artists of the 20th century. Not great Australian artists, but great artists globally, yeah. uh, because that art is not only contemporary, but ancient. And that's the thing that we uh, need to understand as a community. We have the world's oldest surviving people who are producing okay. contemporary art in the world, and we should be really celebrating that. I think part of the issue too, uh, and looking back at Expo, uh, which is now some 32 years on, uh, in those days we were culturally uh, naive and immature. We couldn't understand, but in those, that might have assisted us in doing things that today we probably would have hesitated to do. Um, sometimes I think we bog ourselves down in protocols and as a result maybe don't uh, open up enough to see things uh, as we were able to see them at Expo. Um, yeah. I, I think that uh, particularly those people who say uh, the ancient markings uh, that were part of ceremonies that were thousands of years old should never be revealed outside of those sacred spaces. Now it's been a long-standing debate between uh, First Nations communities here and around the world. But if we don't reveal something of that culture, the rest of the world doesn't see how beautiful that culture is. So the fine balance that we have to walk between opening up uh, and revealing the magnificence of this very special culture, uh, and at the same, but at the same time preserving the, uh, the privacy and the intimacy uh, of those spaces and those traditions. Uh, the, the way that our first Australians lived so carefully with the environment and, and stewardship that they created to preserve for all those 60,000 odd years and the plant material that they used in so many different ways, it's all intertwined. And that's what we tried to do here at Expo, just to give a little bit of this uh, relationship between the natural environment the cultural environment, lifestyle, everything. And I mean, we are so lucky, as you've said, in Australia here, that so much of our natural environment is still preserved there and, and, and as it was 60,000 years ago. And, uh, and it's wonderful now that our peoples and their cultural um, expertise is, is now being acknowledged. And I, so I'd like to think that it's a, something that the two, the natural environment and the cultural environment, to go together um, and show the world just what, you know, is, is being done here. Absolutely. David uh, and, and, and Laurie, 
thank you so much again. Uh, Laurie, this has really just been another fantastic chapter in this John Oxley series. Um, another really interesting uh, fact has come to life of you uh, testing rocks uh, without any clothes. <laughs> I just think this, this just adds to the, uh, to the depth uh, and also just the sacrifices that you made for Expo 88. Are there any? You didn't have clothes on when you were... Oh, there it is. He did have clothes on. <laughs> yeah, that's not me, but that's, that's the rock, yeah. <laughs> that's but, the rock. They're just incredible a, rocks, Wade. That just the way that they ring. You, know, you hit them with, with anything metal. And, and uh, I just wish that... I don't know what happened to them. 